In this video, we're going to look at Chess.com's new Insights feature and see what we can take away from the Insights to improve in our own game. So I'm going to walk you through my Chess.com Insights, show you what things I've noticed from them, and what I can use with this information to improve on my own game. All right, so up the top here, you can see you can select rated, unrated, or all. You can select a rating category and a time frame. One thing I'll note about the time frame, um, it's very tempting for me to look within the last 90 days or within the last year, but the issue with lowering this down to one year in my case is I only have 184 games. I think you really want that number of games played to probably be closer to the 1,000 number to really give you accurate data. Once you start stratifying things down less than 100 games, the data will become very noisy. So I'm going to look all time. 1260 games. Okay, the win rate, not super interesting to me because this is based on the rating of your opponent. So if you tend to play players a little bit lower rated, you'll probably win more games. This is interesting. I played the most games in 2014, again in 2018, and then a little bit in 2021 in a two year break from playing Blitz, at least on this account on chess.com. Accuracy, 80.57. That seems pretty consistent over the years. When I was very active, 2014, it was 79.1. And what were my other active years? 2018, 82.5. So that looks like an improvement, 79.1 to 82.5. And then 79.2 in 2021. What this doesn't tell us, though, is the rating of our opponents. So if I tended to play let's say, lower-rated opponents in 2018, that could lead to a higher accuracy. Accuracy by move number overall. This is interesting to me. So obviously move one should be pretty accurate, but I tend to do the worst right in the round moves 21 to maybe 28. There's that dip there, and then it goes up to 77.8. So yeah, probably moves 23 to 28. And let's see, by piece color, looks like my white openings are a bit stronger than my black openings. You see that higher accuracy for the first probably 15 moves even when I'm playing white. So that's something that I could work on with the black pieces. Um, and I've seen that in my own takeaways as well. My white openings seem more solid than my black openings. And I really like this versus similar players comparison. So remember, this is based on over a thousand games. So this should be pretty accurate, this blue line. And I definitely dip below by a couple caps or a couple accuracy points. I dip below similar players, my peer group, um, in this kind of move 20 to 28 range. So that's something I should definitely be looking to work on. Um, and then in the end game, I'm less accurate as well. But this is really deep into the end game, and I don't think a lot of my Blitz games go past move 50. So I'm not sure if there's any good takeaways from that. Um, at that point in the game, they tend to be, you know, time scrambles, time pressure. So I'm not going to take too much away from that end game performance. Um, but definitely something here, this move 20 to 29 range. Past performance is only when you enter a time frame. And this chart makes sense. You know, my rating is probably in 2250, 2300 range for Blitz usually. And I kind of uh, hit that 50% range somewhere around 2200. And I don't do very well against the high rated players. Makes sense. Game shapes. A lot of the games are still giveaways. One player was winning and gave it away. Um, and when I say still, I mean you know, as my rating increased, you would think that this would go down over time and there would be less giveaways, but I think a lot of my Blitz games are decided by big blunders um, in that sudden category as well, giveaway, sudden, and intense are probably higher quality games, serious games. Results by game shape. This is interesting to me. So I do pretty well in smooth games, winning 60%. And I think that kind of matches my playing style. Um, but I also do well in wild games, so <laughs> maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, balance games, there's a lot of draws, that makes sense. 
But if you look at the numbers here, six versus seven games, that's very small numbers. So a lot of the games tend to be giveaways, which I'm winning 52%. And if we look at my overall percentage, it was 53%, so pretty close. So I don't think there's a lot of takeaways for me with the game shape chart. Accuracy by game shape, this makes sense. Lowest accuracy in the wild games, balanced and smooth. I do well, especially balanced. I'd like to see this compared to players uh, at my rating. Game phases tend to go into the end game. By piece color, more end games with black, more middle games with white. And against similar players, yeah, my games tend to go a little bit deeper into the end game than similar players. Accuracy by game phase. I'm lower across the board. <laughs> I don't know what to take away from that. All right, results from games that ended in each phase. I did not look at this previously. Um, so games that end in the opening, I'm winning 65%. So I'm getting more opening wins than my peers. That's kind of cool. Games that end in the middle game, I'm also doing a little bit better. End games are similar. So I'm getting quite a few more opening wins. Now, the thing to keep in mind is this could be because I'm tending to play slightly lower rated players. Like if I were playing Entitled Tuesday every week, and those are the majority of my games, I would probably be getting crushed in a lot more openings than I do, let's say, playing in an arena event. Forks. I do pretty well with the forks compared to similar players. So this yellow triangle shows where my peers are, players at similar ratings, and they tend to be a little bit lower than myself on forks with pawn, knight, bishop, and rook. A little bit higher on queen. And king, there's only, there's not much data. Pins, pretty similar across the board. I don't think there's anything too interesting there. But mates, this one I was very interested in seeing. I'm missing mate in ones and mate in twos. Um, and one cool thing about this is you can actually drill down and go look at the positions where you missed the mate in ones, um, and you can replay them. So that's kind of cool. And you can do that with these last couple categories as well. You can replay your forks and pins and try to learn from them. And that's something I would recommend doing. Um, hanging pieces and free pieces. Yeah, this one I like. So free pieces, similar players. I am missing more free pieces than my peers. This is something that's consistent across every single type of piece. And I've noticed this in my Blitz games as well. I think I could gain another 100 points, 200 points, if I got better at just always keeping a board awareness of which pieces are hanging. Because I think the big difference between, let's say, a 24, 2500 Blitz player and a 22, 2300 Blitz player is shoring up those really quick blunders, like the one move hanging piece, the one move checkmate, those kind of things. If I can clean that up, I could probably gain 100 or 200 points in Blitz just by paying more attention to the hanging pieces and the free pieces. So that's something I need to work on. Move quality. 70 brilliant moves. And it would be really cool if they let you drill down to these moves, and I think that's a planned feature. Um, let's compare to similar players. A little bit lower on brilliant, a little bit higher on best. I like this stat. Plus 2.4%, excellent. Good's a little bit higher. Book is a little bit lower. So again, openings might need work, and we'll look at piece color in a second. And I'm making less mistakes. So I like that. By piece color, I'm playing more best moves with black, but less book moves by 2%. So for whatever reason, I'm falling out of book much more quickly with the black pieces, and I think that's something I could work on. Um, that's not intentional. I'm not trying to necessarily do something funny with the black pieces or throw my opponents off. I'm just not playing as deep into book theory. So one thing that would be nice with this table is if you could actually exclude the book percentages and just look at the rest and see when you're out of book, 
how do the rest compare? Because they're going to be skewed by this being 2% lower. Now, I don't think I'm necessarily playing more best moves with black once you account for the book moves. And then the totals. Move quality over time. All right, so I like the moves to be at least good. And this is kind of hard to read, but it, it seems like I've been pretty consistent over the years. I don't see anything too striking in this chart. Pieces by a game phase. Accuracy per piece. Yeah, the opening, I have higher accuracy for each piece. Lowest accuracy comes from king moves in the middle game. Huh. All right, let's compare to similar players. Maybe this will tell us something. Moves per piece, uh, they're all within 1%. No big takeaways there. Average accuracy per piece. I'm down one on the knights, down one on the rooks. I don't have any big takeaways there. Castling by phase. Tend to castle in the opening. That makes sense. Never castled in the end game. And pretty similar depending on no matter when I castle. This one was interesting to me though. Short versus long. When I castle king side and my opponent castles queen side, I'm losing more often than I win. And I've actually noticed this in my games. Um, when Black Castle's queen side, in certain openings, I've had trouble. They're not as natural for me. But when I'm playing white and I castle queen side, I don't seem to have as many issues. I have over 50% win rate, no matter what black does. So I think this tends to be, though, when I'm playing white, but it it's also could be when I'm playing black as well. My opponent castling long when I castle short has caused some problems. And when my opponents don't castle and I castle kingside, I'm doing really well. That makes sense. Their king gets stuck in the center. And when I never castle, uh, opponent castling long causes me the most problems. That's kind of interesting. Time of day. Now, I would think that in the evening, I play worse. That's what I've noticed. And in the morning, I play best. That matches up here. I don't know what nighttime is classified as. That'd be kind of, oh, here it is, midnight to 6 a.m. I do not play much between midnight and 6 a.m., but I do well when I do play. That's very interesting. Time of day results. Morning is the best. Yeah, afternoon, midday. I wouldn't expect that to be as good. By day of the week, I tend to play the most on Thursdays and Fridays, and the least on Mondays. Yeah, Mondays are a busy day for me usually, and that's my lowest accuracy as well. That makes sense. I don't probably get as much sleep Sunday night. A little busier on Mondays. Black seems to do the, my opponents seem to do the best on Mondays here as well. And I kind of like this one. Uh, it gets cut off a little bit on the stream, but this is the geography chart. And you can see results by country. US, I'm winning 58%. Russia, 58%. International, only 25%. And France, 37%. So I'm doing pretty well against. U.S., Russia, Germany, but not so well against France and Canada and international. All right, so the big takeaways that I have from this are kind of going back to the top. Um, here we go. The move numbers. I think this kind of early middle game moves 20 to 29, 23 to 29, somewhere around there. Maybe you could just call that straight middle game, not early middle game. That's where I'd need work. Um, and I think my openings need a little work from the black side. So openings from black and middle games from both colors. 
So I think we saw that here as well. I mean, they're pretty similar in that middle game stretch. And the way I'm going to work on this is I'm going to work on the chess goals repertoire for my black openings, both Carol Khan and the Dynamic Slob courses. There's links in the description below if you're interested in those. And for those middle games, I'm going to find more sample games of master players out of my openings and try to really study those and look at the plans and see if I can replicate those plans in my own games. All right, so I hope you guys like this video. This is chess.com's new insights feature, and you can find that by mousing over the learn button and clicking on insights. You can check out your own games. Very interesting, and I think even though it's kind of a data overload, as you dig into this and compare it to the, your takeaways from your own games, you can start to find some little nuggets that you can think about in the future or use to help train with your own study plan. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.